I hope you like this story. It might be over your head. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So I I'm a Lyft driver, um, and uh, it's it's great. I like it. Uh, I get people in my car. They're basically hostages. They can't go anywhere. So I like to run all my stories and tell my jokes because I'm a comedian. And then if they laugh, we all have fun. And if they don't, I give them a one star rating. <laughs> I don't really do that. Um, but. Uh, I have one particular story. It was a St. Patrick's Day, and I had just come back from doing a comedy show, and I was a little mad at myself for accepting this show because it was a free show, and I could have been making a lot of money on the road on a St. Patrick's Day, obviously. Um, it was a charity show for a battered women's shelter, so I kind of felt like, ah, I kind of have to do it, but... Um, I don't know. I still would have done it, even if it was for the men who beat them. I'm a comedian. I'm a little stage time. So, well, I'm no worse than anybody. You know that's true. I know it. It is. So, anyway, I'm coming back from this show. It's now 10.30. The thing ended at 9. So, I drove an hour and a half for this free show. And the good news is that it was still St. Patrick's Day, and it was a Saturday. So, the bars were still going. And I'm thinking, well, if I get on the road now, I can probably still make a lot of money. And there was a streak. So all you drivers know what that means. If I accepted my first ride before 11 and then took two more without pausing, there was $10 in it for me. <laughs> so I get my first ride before 11 and I'm like, yes! I'm gonna do two more. I had no money, by the way. I was like completely broke. Yeah, you don't cheer for no money. You. Uh, but <laughs> that's why I'm in this position. I'm like, all right, here's my plan. I'm gonna get the $10, and then I'm gonna express transfer it into my bank account, and I'm gonna go to the gas station, and I'm gonna go get more gas, because I had about a third a tank of gas, and like, nothing, right? That would have been a great plan. However, in my excitement to get out the door, I had left my purse in my apartment containing all my money. So, now I have a decision to make. I've got like the angel over here being like, $10 isn't worth getting stranded. And then I've got the devil being like, you're not gonna run out of gas. And I'm like, who do I listen to? And I'm an Aries, I love red. So I just kept going. So, and here's the thing, my plan would have worked if I didn't finish right before midnight when the streak started going like crazy. And then I forgot, I forgot all about this plan. And I'm like, can't even see the dashboard because all I have are dollar signs like flashing in my eyes. So I keep going and I'm having a grand time and I'm driving all over the place and I'm making all kinds of money. And about three in the morning, I get a little ding saying 50 miles till empty. But that's fine because I had more than tripled my goal. You know, my goal was make a hundred dollars or, you know, somebody pukes, whichever comes first. Because if somebody pukes, you get $100, and then you can go home. And if it's green vomit, I think it might be a bonus. So I, uh, I, I see this, and I go, oh, that's okay. Well, I'm fine. I'll just go home now. Here's the problem. Monetarily, I was on top of the world. Geographically, I was in Oxnard. I live in Sherman Oaks. So... Oxnard is 47 miles away from Sherman Oaks. And I mean, 50 miles to go, that should be enough. But if you've ever played Russian roulette with your gas tank, then you know, right, that once you start getting down below 20 miles to go, that like MPG, it, it turns into like a, it's not accurate. So, no, and the, the ironic part about this is that where I pulled over to measure where I was, right across from me is a 24 hour gas station. However, this was like, this was a few years ago and Apple Pay existed, but it wasn't like, I didn't even have it. There's no way this like ramshackle gas pump in the middle of Bumblefuck had it. Like that, I would be surprised if they even had it now, you know? So what am I gonna do, Venmo the guy? I have all this money, but I have no money. So I did every gas saving trick that I could think of, all of which I'm completely convinced are wise tales, like turning off the air, turning off the music, like keeping my gas steady, trying to hold my breath, and none of it mattered because I get like, you know, a certain way to be home and all of a sudden, 20, 18, 14, seven, 
three, zero, fuck, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm one exit away from my house when it gets to below zero. And maybe it keeps some reserve, but like, I don't really know. And I'm totally freaked out and I don't want to peter off in the middle of the freeway at now 3.30 in the morning. So I just stop and I pull over and, and I know the area because it's only one exit from my house. So I pull over next to a gas station and I'm like, I'll just walk. And then in the morning, I'll come back with my purse and everything will be fine. So I start walking. And about a minute into this walk, Bill Bojangles Robinson in a limousine pulls up, but not the actual. If you don't know who Bill Robinson is, he was a tap dancer and an actor from like 1910. He's in all those Shirley Temple movies, whatever, anyway. It wasn't actually him, but the guy looked exactly like him. And he had this, he was this old black guy with this green bowler hat and green bow tie and green vet, because it was St. Patrick's Day. And, and he pulls up, and he goes, what are you doing walking this time of night, darling? And I was like, oh, I'm just coming from my car. And he goes, you run out of gas. And I'm like, damn it, is that obvious? <sighs> so he's like, hop in, I'll take you home. When a stranger offers you, I know you're supposed to say no. Everybody knows that, I know that. But he had a limo, which semi-legitimized him. <laughs> semi-legitimized him because there was nobody in this limo, which means maybe he dropped off his customers, maybe he murdered them. I had no way of knowing, which is what I was thinking as I got into the car. So... He drives me, his name, turned out his name was Wallace, and he was very nice. And he drives me home, and I say, good night, Wallace, hey, thanks a lot. And he's like, what do you do, what do you mean? Don't you want to go get your car? I'm like, oh, <laughs> uh, no, I'll, go. I'll just do it in the morning. He's like, don't be silly, it's no trouble. I'm like, really, really? And then I'm thinking like, well, what if this was his plan? I'm like, don't murder me yet, wait till I have something to say. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 Well, of course, if that was his plan, the joke would be on him, because mm -hmm, I'm a lift driver. So anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, I go get my purse, I get back in the car with this man, and he drives me back to the, to the gas station. And then he says, all right, I said, hey, th thank you, above and beyond, you know, get home safe. And he goes, oh, you know I will. Hey, well, I got you here. Mind if I ask you for a favor? And I went, oh boy, um, sure, sure. What do you need? And he says, I have a bit of a foot fetish. <laughs> Can I see one of your feet? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> and I went, what? And like, right? And this guy, as if I hadn't heard him, just repeats the request slowly and more. I have a bit of a foot, like really punching the teeth, <laughs> fetish. It was right. Can I see one of your pretty feet? And I said, no! And I jumped out of the car. <laughs> and I ran over my car, I locked the door, and I stayed there until he was like long out of sight. In retrospect, I, I probably could have been a little nicer about it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he did manage to hold his creepiness until the end. You know, you got to give him that. Um, anyway, I escaped with my life and my feet intact. So that's a good thing. All's well that ends well. Uh, I'll probably never watch a Shirley Temple movie again. No nightmares. But uh, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.